issues to class and to lab, and also to share with what, what you've done uh, with, with the other folks in, in the class. Because uh, that's important to do, to get feedback. And you know, sometimes people will look at it and say, you know, gee, how did you do this or how did you do that? And, and that's, a, that's a good part of, of learning. I, I think classes where I see that um, sort of little community develop. And again, you know, it's late in the semester. Uh, but it's still still not too late to do that. I will say that I got an announcement. I think it's for today. I hope it's for today. Uh, between 12 and 2, there's going to be food out there for free. <laughs> All right? So, uh, you know, I know they're competing up against my lab time. So, you know, but yeah, that was unwise of them. But still, you know, so I know some of you folks have the operating systems class. You can skip that. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and go and get a bite. Or if you want to step out and, and get a bite. But anyhow, yeah, you might as well take advantage of it. You know, you're probably paying for it some way, right? right? Activity fee or something or other. So you might as well get, get some food out of the deal. Pardon me? I think it's just a nice, you know, spring celebration. Spring, 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 spring fling. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I I think there's I think yeah there's lobster and and oh, yeah. fillets and and you know yeah the, and there's a chef out there if there's nothing there you like I think he can whip something up for you custom <laughs> yeah see there you go <laughs> that's not no, that's not a good idea I, I, this is well this this probably predates most of the people in this class but back in the seventies. Uh, they had a 10 cent beer night uh, for the Cleveland Indians game that turned into a riot, actually. Because, you know, I mean, that's, in retrospect, that's asking for trouble. My, my brother was actually there, although my brother really isn't a drinker, so he didn't drink, but he said it got pretty ugly, you know, because, you know, I mean, that's like, th th that's an invitation to bring out the worst in people. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's kind of like anonymous boards on the internet, right? Those are invitations to bring out the worst in people. So, and sure enough, it did. Anyhow, believe it or not, you pretty much know enough JavaScript to do the last assignment. Now, you might find that hard to believe, uh, but what, what, what I aim to do today is, is go over the last assignment and sort of give you a template. Because um, remember, um, our goal in this class isn't to make you JavaScript experts. Our goal in this class is to... Uh, give you a sense of what the capabilities are of, uh, of client-side scripting uh, and, and what it's used for and, and that sort of thing. So with that in mind, we'll go over uh, an example. And we'll actually, we'll actually build this example maybe a couple different ways. All right? And you can, you can take a look at, um, at that and, and, and go from there. Um, Someone earlier in the semester asked a question about creating a like button on Facebook or a, uh, a plus one button for, for uh, Google Plus or what was the other one? Uh, Twitter buttons, which you actually could, could do several Twitter things. Um, I posted some links about that. In addition, I posted um, some links about uh, web servers. All right, Because really, the last part of this developing a website is to actually put it up on a web server so it can be accessed worldwide. And that actually is not that difficult to do. Essentially you use a little FTP program or you have built into the website that's hosting your, your site, there's like a little control panel where you can go in and you essentially just upload files that way. And it's really not that big of a deal, but again, it, you know, um, it would be good, something good uh, to, to review. Uh, if anyone wants to review these topics in any more detail, feel free to either ask me questions or we can talk about it in lab or email me the questions or whatever. Well, and one thing I want to say is, is we're getting towards the end of the semester. Um, is, um, you know, first of all, I, you know, I've had a great time this semester. You guys are a great class. I say that both for the classroom folks and, and for the online folks. And so just because you have left the class doesn't mean you, you have to stop asking me questions if you're running into difficulty with something. So feel free to email me anytime. Um, after the end of the semester, it's probably better to use my regular email address instead of Angel, because usually what I do is I, I don't look at previous semesters after the semester's done, you know, because there's really no need to. 
and it just kind of clutters up my screen. So if you want to contact me, the best thing to do would just be use my regular lorraineccc.edu uh, email address. All right, anyhow, we're going to look at an example, and we're going to look at doing this a couple different ways. Let me make sure which version of this example it is. All right. This is a good one. Um, we're back to our cats again. All right. Now, one thing that you'll notice, first of all, is each of these pictures, or rather, rather all of these pictures are... Uh, or how do I want to say this? These pictures aren't oriented all the same way. In other words, these two are, port are oriented portrait and this one's oriented landscape. What I typically like to do when I do that then is I'll make the thumbnail be uh, a square. All right? So I won't, usually with the thumbnail, you make a thumbnail to be just simply a miniature version of the big uh, image. Um, usually, if this is the case, I don't do that. All right. In the case of uh, when there's mixed dimensions among the pictures, I would I typically go in and make it square. That simply allows these to line up in a nice little pattern here. And if I had more, I could have a nice little grid of, of images. And it would look a lot neater than if I had some of them oriented uh, portrait, some of them or an oriented uh, landscape. The other thing I did is, is I, I, and I think this is an effective technique, is the, the thumbnail doesn't have to be simply a mini version of the big picture, right? In other words, notice that in this case, the bigger image includes a little bit of the couch uh, and so on. But when I cropped it to make the thumbnail, I, I cropped out... Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to... I wish I had two, two mouses, two mice. Uh, it's kind of, uh, when I cropped it out, I, I cropped out that part. Uh, and this does a couple things. First of all, that's good as far as keeping the dimensions constant. And secondly, um, it allows you to make the thumbnail a little more detailed than it would otherwise. Right? If I tried to make the thumbnail simply be a smaller version of the image, you know, you wouldn't necessarily be able to see in the thumbnail as great a detail. And it's a good way to also to pique curiosity. Like, what else is going on in this picture, right? I've seen that done very effectively. Well, they'll take a big painting. You know, I, I saw it on an art site that is uh, subsequently closed. But, I've, uh, you know, you have a big painting. And they might show as a thumbnail just a small piece of it. Well, if you do that effectively, that kind of piques people's curiosity. Like, gee, what's going on in the rest of the painting, right? Or, or photograph or whatever. So, you know, it, it, it kind of creates a little bit of visual interest. But the most important thing about this from our uh, circumstances is the fact that as we move our mouse over these images, we see a different image. All right, we see a different image. And in fact, more than a different image, we actually see a different heading and we see a different uh, little caption underneath it. So we're going to investigate how to do this. This really is just an extension of what we did last time. All right? And if you remember what we did last time, we kind of set up a little recipe for doing these client side scripts. And the recipe looks like this. All right? Number one, we have a user event which starts the ball rolling. All right? Our whole goal here is to do some sort of interactivity. And Interactivity, typically you think of as the user does something, the page responds. So I put my mouse over a cat. Make your cat and mouse jokes now, all right? I put my mouse over the cat, and a different cat's image appears. You know, the, the, that particular cat's image appears. And if I move it off, then I can, I can see another cat. All right. In this case, last time we used an on-click event. If you remember, we use non-click event to show and hide different things. All right. Uh, this time, we're not using an on-click event. We're using what's called the on mouse over event. That's one word, no spaces. I kind of put a little bit of space there, but that's not meant to be a space. Again, there's all sorts of events that we can have, and again, that's one of them. On mouse over, on click. 
those are certainly probably two of the most common things that you, uh, common events that, that, that you uh, interact with. That's, that's one of the main ways that people interact with their page. Second thing that we have is we have the DOM, stands for Document Object Model, that allows us to point to something on the page and change it. And lastly, we have the actual JavaScript syntax itself that allows us to work with the DOM in accessing and changing the properties of the page. So we can define properties of the page so we can set what the page looks like to start. And then we can write our JavaScript to change the way the page looks dynamically. So let's look at the three pieces of this. Remember the, the three web standard languages that we use is there is HTML, which is a content, there's CSS, which is the appearance, and there's JavaScript, which is the behavior or the activity or the actions of the page. So let's analyze what's in each of these. All right. What's in HTML? Well, the three thumbnails, and we'll see this in a second. I'm just sort of giving a preview of this. But there's the three thumbnails, and there are actually three divs. One for each cat. All right. Let's take a look at that. So if I look at this in the HTML, ah, I stand corrected. There is the three thumbnails, take two. Do you, do you have your little clapper to, yeah, to take, this is a different version of this one than I thought. I, I've, I've done this example so many times, so many different ways that I lost track. The HTML contains the three thumbnails, and it contains a div, which contains the heading, the image, and the little caption associated with the image. All right? Pardon me? Oh. HTML contains the three thumbnails and one div that contains a heading, an image, and a caption. So we look at this, three thumbnails. All right, and we have a, um, a div that contains the heading, the image, and the caption. What is the CSS responsible for? The CSS is responsible pretty much, in this case, only for positioning those elements. One thing that I failed to mention is that these three thumbnails are in a nav div. All right. And we position that. We set the size and the width of that. I'm having a bad day on the, on the, on the buttons here. Um, we have, we have this, we have uh, uh, the thumbnails, we float to the left, we make a width of, of 120, uh, and we do some padding, and then the bigger we float to the left, give it a width of 400, and add some padding to that. So really, it's responsible, the CSS is responsible for the uh, positioning of the things. What's the JavaScript responsible for? The JavaScript is responsible for changing 
the middle div. All right, changing the middle div. What are we changing in the middle div? Well, we're changing those three things. We're changing the header, we're changing the uh, picture, and we're changing the caption. So how do I do it? Again, event on mouse over. It's different than an on-click event. So it, I don't have to click on the image to make this happen. I can just put my mouse over it. I then use DOM expressions to change all three of those things. And each of the three statements are separated uh, by a semicolon. All right. Now, what does the first one say? First thing says document get element by ID dot SRC equals Clio.jpg. And then we have Simba.jpg and then we have Jackson.jpg. What's that saying? Document, somewhere on the web page. Get element by ID. Find the thing on the page that has this for the ID. And the, and the particular ID that we're interested in, in this case, is called Big Pick. All right. Dot SRC, what are we changing about that thing on the page that's called Big Pick, which, by the way, is this image. That image is the one that has an ID of Big Pick. What are we changing about it? We're changing the SRC attribute. All right. Same SRC attribute that I coded in my image tag to start with. That sort of gives it the initial value. The JavaScript then goes in and changes that to something else. All right. What am I changing it to? I'm changing it to, well in this case, I'm changing it back to Clio.jpg. All right. We won't notice a change because that's initially what it is. In these other cases, I'm changing it to Simba.jpg and Jackson.jpg. So as you put your mouse over those, it points to that thing on the page and it says, hey, change that SRC attribute to whatever value I have there. So if I just had that statement and I didn't have anything after it, it would just change the picture. But I've done something else. I've gone in and I've created, or I'm pointing to, something called cat name. All right. Well, what on the page has a, a value or an ID of cat name? This H1 does. Now, what am I changing about this? I'm not changing the SRC attribute. There is no SRC attribute for H1s. I'm changing the inner HTML. Well, what do you suppose the inner HTML is? The inner HTML is a code between the starting tag and the ending tag. So I can change really any HTML simply by setting the inner HTML property. I could even put an image there. I could even put a link there if I wanted. I could put any HTML I wanted to as the inner HTML and it would stick that HTML code between the start and end tag. In this case I'm doing something simple. I'm, I'm simply putting the word Clio or Jackson or Simba between the start and end tag. Finally, I do the same thing for the description of I put my little caption underneath each of the cats. What do I have? I have cat desk, cat description. I'm setting the inner HTML. Well, what on the page has an ID of cat desk? This does. All right. And there you go. All right. So essentially I'm doing the same thing. I have, uh, the, that we did last time, just it's, it's, there's a little more of it, and I'm triggering it based on a different event. I still have the event to make the, um, to make the um, uh, source a different source. So I have that code in there on, 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 the, on the mouse over. But then I also go in and I change the H1 and I change the contents of the paragraph based on where, um, you know, where the, uh, you know, wh on which, which cat the mouse is positioned. Questions about any of this? Now, this is probably a bad expression given 
the specific example that I'm using, but as they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. All right. Uh, we could do this a different way. And let me pull up an example of a different way to do the same thing. All right. I think I have that example posted. If not, I'll, I'll make one real quick. That's not the one I want. Give me one more shot at finding it. I wonder if even the machines get overwhelmed at this time of the year because this thing is not moving very fast. Tell you what, I'll just, I'll just make a version of this to, to do that. We should be able to get through this and, and still have time to do the evaluation. All right, I'm going to do this a slightly different way. Now, if you can imagine, if you look at this code here, all right, this code gets a little confusing to read, right? Because there's just a giant string of stuff in there with mixing, uh, mixing single quotes and double quotes and semicolons and parentheses and all that. It's real easy to mess this up. So here's an alternative way to do this, all right? I'm going to get rid of the JavaScript for now. And we'll go and we'll, we'll add the JavaScript in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make three divs. One for each cat. I'm going to get rid of the CSS too. Get rid of everything. <laughs> I'm going to make three divs, one for each cat. Alright, which makes sense, right? This is a content that's going to be on the page. And for, yeah, let's see.
All right. So let's go and look at this. I open it up. This is just the HTML. And what do you see? Well, you see like you'd expect. You see the three thumbnails and the four images, or uh, the, the three divs underneath it. All right. This is the content of this page. Right? Remember this. What's the content of this page? The thumbnail plus three divs. Now, that's not how we want it to work though, because we don't want to show all of these. We want to make it so that as the user puts their mouse over these, all right, the only one of them shows at a time. So let's go in and let's, let's see what we can do to make that work. How are we going to make that work? Well, that's the appearance of the page, right? This is the content of the page the three thumbnails and the three divs, the appearance of the page is what's going to be in the CSS. So, what do you think I'm going to do in the CSS? No, nah, not, that, not, that, not that hard. You said change the background color or something? No. Nah. Well, show or hide. I'm going to set the visibility property. So, I'm going to start the page with Clio being visible. And then I'm going to go and Depending on where the mouse is, I'm going to show or I'm going to hide. All right. So, what I can do is I can go in here and I can set in my style. I can make Clio visible, and I can make the other two cats invisible. All right. So. Now if I bring this page up, I don't see the other two. All right. Not bad. Now, let's go and let's add a little bit of behavior to this. And let's add the on mouse over event. Let's do it on Simba to start because Cleo's already showing. We'll do it. Oops. Oh, I did it on, on the Simba thumb, right? So I put my mouse over Simba, and there he appears. But he appears down there. Is that what I really want? No. Where do I want it? I want it to appear where Cleo is. How am I going to do that? Yeah, set the position, right? I want to set the position. Again, think about it conceptually. What is it that I'm changing? I'm changing, I want to change the physical layout of this. I want Simba to appear in that position by where Cleo is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to put all of these at the same spot. Because I think we can see how this is going. With Jackson, would have the same problem. Jackson would be way down at the bottom. So I'm going to say position absolute top uh, will make 250 pixels left zero pixels. All right.
And that's a little too far down. Let's make it 100. All right, that looks good. Now, put our mouse over Simba. Ooh. Well, what happened? Pardon me, that was expected, right? Why? What did, what did I do? What did I do wrong? I didn't hide Cleo, right? So, I didn't hide Cleo. So, okay. So, what I want to do is I want to go in here and in addition to making Simba visible, oops, I want to make Cleo invisible. And eventually, I'll have to do that with Jackson once we start showing uh, Jackson. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. What am I thinking? This is like, I've gained, I've gained new appreciation of the hosts of cooking shows. <laughs> to do something while you're talking is not easy. It's like there was an old game in the Nintendo DS, one of those, I don't know, brain games or whatever they're called, but they would show you a color, all right, they'd show you the word for a color, and it would be a different color. So, for example, it'd show you blue, but the word blue was in green. And you had to say, not the word of the color, but the color that it actually was. So you'd have to say green. If it, that, that's harder than you think, believe it or not. It was for me, anyhow. Uh-huh. Right. Right. No one ever did? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we put it on Simba. Yeah, and that looks like it's good. All right. Now, we have to do the same thing for the other two. So, what I'm going to do is copy this. And make the appropriate changes. Uh, probably, we'll talk, about, we'll talk about that next time though. Because, yeah, this is still not terribly readable. Uh, I think so. And this should give us the right result. Now, the one thing that is noticed is this, this isn't terribly readable, all right? In addition, for anyone that knows me very well, it's very repetitious, and I hate doing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, I think most software developers do, right? That's why they, 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 they got into software development, all right? One of the reasons. So, what we want to do, and we'll look at this next time, is try to make it both more readable and more efficient. All right, so we'll look at how, how we can do that next time. So now we go and we put our mouse over Simba. He appears, Jackson, he appears, and Cleo. So we're all set, and it works. Again, still using all the things that we talked about last time. User event, using the DOM to point to the thing that we want to change, and then using the JavaScript syntax to change the thing that we are interested in changing. Next time we'll look at maybe making this a little, little more readable, and a little more uh, efficient and maintainable. All right? Because what if, God forbid, I were to add pictures of my other two cats? All right? Then we'd have a mess of code, right? Because we'd have, you know, show Kovu, show Kiara, you know, and we'd be there all day, you know, and, and, and so on. So, all right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, stop recording. I will upload this example. I need a volunteer to take the um, 
completed evaluations up to the business division. Do I have a volunteer? All right, excellent.